Hey guys, it's Linda Winter. I have another project for you. Do y'all recognize these? These guys here, if you have a dog and you're taking that dog for a walk, you probably know about these. These guys, they come in different sizes, but pretty much they're the same standard size. So this I wanted to create, because I had lots of requests, a little doggy do bag, a doggy poop bag holder, this guy here. Now, if this looks kind of familiar, my tissue holders, do y'all recognize these? It's the same thing, it's just smaller. The tissue holders are made from these two. I've got two different sizes. They're both the same height here. So five and a half, five and a half, it's the width. I'm gonna flip this over so you can see that this right here, this width, this one here, is a little bit wider. That creates the faux binding. So when we did the tissues, this black one here, the black and white polka dot, that was done with this larger template, the wider template. The taller template makes both this guy here, so the tall, the tall part here is this width here. This guy here, the black, that's the width there. So this one, no boxed bottoms. This one, boxed bottoms. So I have a video that shows you how to make these and I talk about doing the box bottoms and I talk about the type of tissues because they make different tissues too. So this guy here, just like for the tissues, I've got for the doggy poop bag. So the doggy poop bag, we have two sizes. This is the height, the four and a quarter, and that's gonna create from here to here. I have a boxed bottom here. I don't have a box bottom here. So the red here, that's my inside lining. That guy right there is created from this one. Four and a quarter, that's our height, by six inches. That's the width. That gives us enough fabric to wrap around and create that faux binding that we have here. So we're going to do the same concept, except we're going to add this time around a little tag and the tags we've got lots of options so I'll show you some of those too. So these two templates and remember the brown or the gray they're both are no slip material and I'll be showing you how to use the rotary cutter with this and we'll cut out some of these too but I want to show you a couple options. So no boxed bottom here, boxed bottoms, boxed bottoms and this one is stuffed and then this has a little strap, fabric strap, this I love this stuff. This guy here, you can buy this by the roll or by the yard. And it's just, a, it's, to me, it's just a real natural kind of a look and it's perfect for dogs um, and perfect for snapping on. All of these are perfect to snap onto your backpack or your dog leash or whatever it is. This one is out of that vinyl, that vinyl material. You notice I don't have a lining in here. And you'll see when we make all of these, we're gonna overlap this. Look at the strap though. I did it a little bit wider because I have a wide accessory here. This is a swivel hook and that part here, we have round here, we have flat here, we have round here, that's just a keychain. This one is flat. Can you see that that's flat? But this one is wider here than it is here. So my strap is a little bit wider here. And I'm going to do a video that'll talk about how to make those straps. This is another one that's my faux leather fabric, but I did a lining on this one. I did a lining and I also changed, instead of doing the box bottom, box bottom, box bottom, box bottom, I only did a box bottom here and a box bottom here. Why? I offset this a little bit so I could put this swivel here on the edge. So when this dangles, it kind of will hang down. So it's just a little bit dressier look. If you look at this right here, this faux leather material, this is a glitter and that is inside of here. And again, on this one, it's not. It's this material, it has like a, like a felt backing to it, but that's just one layer. So those are really easy to do. If I'm doing this one here, I'm only going to use the smaller of the two, the four and a quarter by five inches. Now I've gone in and marked with my Sharpie. I have metallic markings and I have markers on my website and you can get them in various colors. But in here, if you don't want to take the time to trace out, you can see my four. I didn't do a very good job of tracing out. Here I didn't do a very good trace job of tracing out. Why? Because I never take the time to do things well. If you're like me, you can just take this and write on here if you want to. You can write it out or take a minute and trace those out. They're etched for you. You don't have to do that. If you look, you can see the dog poop bag but right now you don't see it. So this allows you, you can see those numbers, but when I have it in a certain position,
and I can't see anything. So coloring with the Sharpie, these metallic markers that I have, you can use a Sharpie if you have them. Metallic works best because it pops. And I have, again, four different colors and I have a bundle of those too. Okay, so the fussy cut. The fussy cut frame comes with the tissue holders. I didn't make a fussy cut because on this, you're probably not gonna fussy cut something right here. That's where the fussy cut part would be showing. And you can see on this one, I've got a dog, I've got a tree on the back. I don't have anything that's really centered. If it's really important, if you're gonna make these and sell these, and you want a fussy cut frame, pick up the phone, call me. Linda, I want a fussy cut frame for the dog poop bag template set and I'll make one for you and we'll add it to the website. Okay, so these guys here, I've shown you these. I'm going to in another video show you how to do a couple other projects. This is just a little bag and this was done with the taller of the two. The four and a, half, a quarter by six inches height. I just cut out two of them. This is laminated fabric and inside of here I've got some hand sanitizer. You can with a strap put a strap and a strap and attach that to your backpack, attach that to whatever it is, or you could actually do a snap if you wanted to. I could also do a snap right inside of here. This one, I did the same concept, but I added the boxed bottoms there, and I added a strap off to the side and this little keychain, and you can hang this somewhere. I've got clips in here, but you can put whatever. You notice this is really wimpy. If I'm gonna make this to really hold my clips, then I would be using, um, instead of just FS101, you could use FS101 on both layers, I used it on the pink, or you could use the fusible fleece if you wanted to do that too. But I'll show you how to do these in another video. I'm also going to show you a project that's done with this. For these guys here, you might have seen me talk about snap bags before. You buy these cheap uh, Dollar Tree tape measures and you cut them and we would put them right in at the top. So basically you would snap it open and snap it closed. So I'll do that in another video. And my guess is you guys know how to do all of those things already. But if you're new to this, a lot of you have been calling me and telling me you're new to sewing and you found my videos and you feel like I'm talking to you because I do easy projects, that's my goal. So I will do another video that'll show you how to do that. Okay, what are we going to do? I first want to show you how the template works. If you're new to the templates, I've got the no slip material on the back. I have five layers of fabric here. And do you see how that grabs? So when I go to cut, you would take the time to line these up nicely. Since these are just scraps that I have, it's a great scrap buster, by the way. So when I go to cut, I'm just simply going to cut I turn the template and you can see how that fabric stays with it. I made my first cut, I made my second cut, and you need to go a little bit past there. When you turn that next side, cut all the way through and cut all the way through. What that's gonna allow you to do is get exactly what it is you want. I did five layers there. Most of the time I do four to six layers. You can do up to eight well. Um, I will tell you that there are people that say, I do 32 layers. I'm not going to do that many. Just because I have a straight edge, I can do more. But, you know, we want to take our time and do accurate. Okay, so what do I have? I have my two fabrics here, and I've just grabbed some scraps. And you notice this one that doesn't have as much of a pattern, this one is going to be the faux lining right here, the faux binding. All right, so I've got a scrap, and I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to... Roll our rotary cutter open, and you can use any rotary cutter. I'm using the left-handed rotary cutter here because I'm a lefty and it's made just for me. So I've taken out of a fabric that doesn't have a lot of pattern. You know, this is a good one here. This is a good one here. These are great for that faux binding part. With this one and this one, you can see how those two would look together. That binding basically would be coming around. This one I have for this, you can see how those two would be cute together. But I'm going to do, since it's a, a doggy poop bag, I'm going to do this for the faux binding. We've cut the first, and I'm going to do this for the majority of the fabric. This is my feature fabric. And if you do have a fussy cut that you want to do, you know, you've got a dog or something, I want you to think about the way this goes. It's going to go this way. So if you've got something on your fabric that is directional, this is up and down, not this way. So it's not the, the height, it's the width. So if you had something right here that you wanted, place it in the center and that would show up, right? Whatever it is here would show up in the center. So I've got my two pieces. 
We also want to have fabric or something for this right here. And we also want to have something for this. So let's take a look up front and I want you to see some of the different options. I've got over here lots of options for you. These are a whole lot of fun to do. Let's bring these over and you can see that one might look kind of cool, but this by itself doesn't do anything. I would need to attach this. I could use something like this and attach this here. And then this would attach to my backpack or whatever, but this would go on my wrist so I could keep it on my wrist. So I could have something like that if I wanted to. So that's an option. I've got these guys here. This, I still need something else, fabric to go with that. You can see how I have this piece, cut it a little bit longer so that we can attach that so it makes it fit. I've got lots of other carabiners, all kinds of stuff. You can use the elastic headbands, all of these. You can attach them and have it hanging off of your wrist if you want to. You can use fabric. You can use the ribbons. You can create your own binding if you wanted to do that. You can use pre-bought bias binding. There are these guys that you have off of your purses and some of the different things that don't trash anything. Save all of that stuff. Even if it's a purse that's really beat up, take all the parts off of it so you can reuse those. Those are really great. And you see how this one even will attach here? So if you wanted to have that, have be able to put this on and off, you can change the length of, of this if you want to. And again, ribbons and those things. Paracord. I have a bundle of paracord on my website that you'll get six packs of paracord, at least 25 yards each. And then you'll also get one of these bags. Do y'all remember when we did a lot of this stuff for your face masks? So I have paracord that is really great too. And what's fun about the paracord is if I did this right here on here, let's see if we can go back to where's my fabric. All right, so if I did this right here, this loop, I could still attach something else. I could attach one of these on here so I could still use that, but this gives me a little bit more for that. Okay, so let's figure out what I'm gonna do. And you notice here, I've got this one that I've started folding and then we can use that. So I'm gonna use this darker one. I like this color and I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll grab just my bias binding. This bias binding, even though I don't have any black in my fabric, I probably have a black leash that I'm gonna attach this to. So we're gonna grab this. By the way, if you were gonna do your own thing, let's go ahead and talk about what we would do. We would cut our piece of fabric, we would fold it in half, we would fold that in half again, fold that in half and press, and then top stitch and or edge, edge stitch, edge stitch, edge stitch, and then once we have that, and we will edge stitch, edge stitch the bias binding, and then this would go inside of here, and you'll see me do this a little bit later on. We'll stitch this together, and then we'll stitch here. And depending on the foot that you have on your sewing machine, we'll move our needle so we can position it. So I'm gonna use this one here, and you need to decide how long you want it to be. I don't really want this to be really long because I don't need it dangling and flopping around because it's, I mean, if you look at this one, you see how this, it's flopping around a little bit? Even that little bit, that is awfully long. If I had a snap in here, let's say that I made this bag to hold and put this inside of here instead of my clips. I've got all those clips in there, so there's not really a whole lot of room, but I could put a snap here if I wanted to. And again, this is done with this one here. So a piece of fabric for the outside front and for the outside back. Same thing with the lining and then I box the corners so we can do that. But think about how long you want this to be and shorter is better. You know, you can see the length here, the length here, that's not quite as long, but that's still long, this length here. So you wanna think about how much you want. So I've got this one and I'll be using a couple inches of this. So later on, we'll place this inside and I'll stitch that together and we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna put that over here. Let's get all of these guys out of the way. We're gonna do some pinning or clipping. If you are doing the vinyl, the faux leather, any of this stuff, the laminated fabric, then you're certainly gonna to wanna to use those clips that I have inside of here. 
because you don't want a pin on here at all. So you decide if you want clips or if you want pins, whatever is your favorite. All right, first thing we're gonna do, just like our tissue holder, we're gonna line these edges up. When we line these edges up, a quarter of an inch or a scant quarter of an inch. If you have baggies, let's look at our measurements here. If we look at our baggies here, we're looking at, I've got one, two, two and a half inches tall. And I've got about an inch and a quarter wide. And again, this is 3D. So we want to make sure, you know, if they're bigger, if your bags are bigger than this. And again, these are pretty standard. I bought from different places and they all seem to be about that size. But if you've got bags that are bigger than this, then a scant quarter of an inch. You don't want this thing to be huge because what are we doing? We're using these bags up. And the more you use, the more that they're going to be loose inside of here. But we don't want to make it so tight either that it's hard to get out. Okay, so we're going to do a quarter of an inch. And I have on my Teflon foot. Why? Because I did some projects with the vinyl. So the Teflon foot that I have on here works with fabric too. But if you don't have a Teflon foot, then you can go ahead and use whatever foot that you have and put a piece of scotch tape on the bottom and then cut yourself an opening for that. All right, I'm going to start stitching and then we want to back stitch. We want to make sure when we're doing our sides right now, we're going to backstitch. If you're going to do the box bottoms, we certainly want to backstitch, not only once we've done those sides, but once we've cut them out too. All right, so what did I do? I've got these that are already sewn, and do you see all that floppiness that's there? I'm going to bring it to the cutting table and let's take a look. All of this excess, remember four and a quarter by five and four and a quarter by six. Those are the two inches or the two sizes that I have. So I have an extra inch here. So what do we want to do? We're going to bring this over. And this is, again, if you're new to sewing, that's where you want to clip or pin. But I'm just going to stitch this down here. OK, so I've got my two edges lined up. And again, we're going to do my quarter inch. If you did a scant quarter of an inch, then do a scant quarter of an inch. Back stitch here. And I do not have interfacing, and you do not want to use interfacing on this project. It's not going to hold up. It's just going to be too much. All right, so you can see I've got more fabric. See how that's flopping up? So what do we want to do? We want to give a good press. So you've got a couple different ways that you can do this. You can press those seams open with your hands, like I'm doing here. Or if you have one of Philip's stilettos, this tool works really, really well for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and press. The other thing you can do, too, is when you flip this over, I press the one side. You can also just pull and give that a good press. The seams do not need to go one way versus the other. So it's not that big of a deal, unless you have a fabric that's light for here and dark here, and then it would be an issue. All right, so I've given a little bit of a press. Now what we want to do is look at this side and look at this side. And I basically want to eyeball. You can use your mat if you want to for measuring, but I'm basically looking at this binding and this binding. That faux binding is what we're talking about. And I'm just going to finger press a little bit. And when I like what I have, I have an iron. You can use your iron, but this works just fine. If you're going to make these and sell these, then cutting those five layers, six layers, eight layers at a time, cut all of your faux bindings, that's the inside, cut all of these, have these stacks, and then you just do one after another after another, so, 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 and then press, 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 all of that. All right, so what are we doing? I've got my binding here, I've got my binding here. I'm gonna fold this in half, because this is such a small project, instead of marking, Instead of pinning, I'm going to grab my teeny scissors here, and I've lined up my edges, and I'm just going to do a little snip here. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. We're just marking the center. All right, I want to pull over some of my samples, and I want to show you an option. All right, so when we look at this pink, you can see I've got my black and I've got my pink. When we look at this guy, you can see I've got my yellow, I've got my red, and I've got stitching. 
So you decide, again, how comfortable are you with sewing? If you want to get some practice in, then stitch the edges, stitch the edges, and stitch the edges. I want to show you how to do that just because I think it's worth knowing that this is an option just to kind of control things. I'm going to move my needle over closer to the edge. And when I get to here, I'm going to bring this so my needle is basically right in the ditch. And you guys that know me know that I don't ever do a white thread on a dark fabric, but we're doing it. I would probably get a pretty aqua thread to use for this just so that it pops a little bit. All right. All right, so whether I've got binding or my fabric that I folded to cut, I want to make sure that whatever measurement that I have here is going to fit this, my swivel hook that's here. I'm going to fold this over once I place that in. I don't want to have a ton of movement here. You can see that fits pretty well. If I had a big one, let me grab this guy here. You can see this is not going to work. Look how that's just all over the place. So we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that whatever swivel hook that we have and whichever method, if we're doing our own fabric or we're using bias binding, we want to make sure that those two match. And again, I'm using white thread on black. That's not anything I would really ever do. But let's go ahead and look to see how much we want to have. I think right there, can you all see right about there? is about as much as I want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. Now, the cool thing about this, if you're doing a bunch of these, do you see I'm almost at half? Go ahead and just stitch all the way down, stitch all the way down on bias binding or on your own fabric, and then you've done all the work and you cut them into the right sizes that you want. So again, assembly line sewing. All right, so this side is the back side of my binding. You can see it's a little bit narrower there. So I want to make sure when I stitch on this side that my needle is not right along the edge. It is going to be folded over, but I still want to make sure that I catch. That's the whole point of this. On this, the folded side, no big deal, but I do want to make them consistent. So at the sewing machine, I'm going to make sure that my needle and my foot, and I'm going to use the edge of the foot as my guide and I'm going to move my needle over a couple stitches and I may need to move it one over, we'll see. And when I get down to here, I'm just barely on. Let's scoot that over a little bit and let's see. Yeah, I did catch just barely. All right, and then we'll bring that needle down and we'll turn around. And again, black thread. rather than the white thread. All right, so I do not need to finish off my edges on the end because that's going to be inside, but I do want to bring this inside here and fold these edges over. And then we are going to stitch the edges down. And right now I've got a good half of an inch more than I really need, but I'm okay with that more when you're making it is better knowing that we're going to cut. Back of the sewing machine, we're going to stitch the edges together. And I backstitched a couple times just to hold it in place. Now, again, depending on the foot that you have, a zipper foot works really well for this because it's going to let you get close up. I'm moving my needle all the way to the left. My hardware is right here, butted up to the edge of the foot. And I'm going to stitch, and I am going to backstitch, and I'm going to stitch one more time. And that's going to hold that swivel ring inside really well. Okay, so again, we've got white thread, big no-no to me. We're going to trim those off. Okay, so that's going to hold that swivel ring inside really well. All right, now what we want to do is place this right where we made that cut. Remember when we folded in half and we snipped there? If I had an up and down, then this would be up, going this way. So you decide how far it is that you want this to go. What we're going to end up doing is folding over to this edge and then folding over to the other edge. I'm going to turn it sideways 
and hopefully you can kind of, yeah, get an idea of where that is. And I have it a little bit further, but this width that I have right here, about a half of an inch, I basically want to have these two overlapping that much. So we're going to do one end and then we'll do the other end as well. So we have to decide, do we want this up here or do we want this further down? So you decide how much you want to have it hanging down. Again, I've got a lot here. I've got a little less here. I've got about the same, but because this is wider, it seems like it's longer. And then I've got a whole lot more here. I like this length. So I'm going to be looking at right about there and you can see this right here, remember we're going to be sewing these together too, so somewhere around there. Now you can pin if you want right there. You can also go ahead and stitch that down. You could use a clip and it's totally up to you. What we want to do is look at the back side and make sure that that's basically in the center. So I'm just going to hold this in place. We'll stitch this down. This is fairly bulky. So I am going to stitch this down just a little bit, and I'm probably better off just holding it with my hands to stitch that down. But do you see, basically, we're going to just come over to the sewing machine and we can stitch. And if you want to stitch from the back side, even, you can do that. So at the sewing machine, I'm just going to take a couple stitches right on that edge. And I haven't moved my needle position yet. We will when we sew these edges together. All right, so let's take a look, and we basically are going to have See that part that's sticking out? When we have our seam, it's going to be a little bit less even than this one, just a hair less, okay? All right, so we had trimmed off some of our threads. Some of these threads are still inside of here. We're going to be trimming that off too, so that doesn't matter so much. Just tacking that down is going to help hold that. All of this bulk here, it's not too long, but if I had a long strap, when I got to this end, I'd want to make sure that I pinned this inside here. All right, so what are we doing? We're folding over to here. And I'm looking to see right basically there. And I'm going to fold this over here too. And again, you can pin or you can clip if you want to. But I'm basically overlapping the two. What we want to make sure that we do at the same time is keep all these edges even here. So these edges too. So pin or clip if you want. And again, if you're new to this, then the clipping, the pinning is a good thing. At the sewing machine, I am going to move my needle back to center position. And that gives me about a quarter of an inch. Quarter inch seam allowance is what we used before, and that's what we're gonna use again. Now I'm gonna stitch once on here. I'm gonna back stitch here, and I'm gonna put my needle down inside of here. I'm gonna flip this around, and we're just gonna stitch down again. Because I've got all that bulk that's there, I'm gonna go over this whole thing a couple times. Let's do one more stitch to the end, lift that up. This just takes the place of back stitching. It's such a short little piece that I'm stitching that it's no big deal. All right, let's go to our other side at the table. And you can see these edges are the same as this. So what do we want to do? We're going to be looking here, since I don't have this piece of hardware here, that strap, I'm looking to see where that cut is and recommend cutting all those threads. So. All right, we're overlapping here. And notice what I just did. We don't want to do that. Do you see how I've got that in the opposite direction? So we want to fold this side down first. We're looking at this. Let's get all those out of the way. And we're going to fold that down. Now, what I want to do is just give this kind of a nice little look on the table. There's bulk here because I've got that whole piece there, but I basically am looking at this width and I'm looking at this width to make sure that I've got these about the same width. And again, if you want to pin or clip, you're welcome to do that. We're just going to make sure that these are consistent. You can see if you're doing assembly line sewing how quickly these things will go together. And this is a really fun project to get rid of all those scraps. And if you're going to be sewing little gifts to give to everybody at the dog club or the kennel or wherever it is, um, all of the groomers that take care of your dogs, whoever it is that you've got that has dogs and loves dogs like you, this is a great gift to give and a super fast, easy one to whip up. Okay, now if you have a serger, 
you go to the serger and you serge those edges down, that's going to clean all that up. And by the way, you could have, instead of doing the sewing here, you could serge that and you could serge that. I like having the stitching just because there's so much bulk here. And if we are putting in that doggy bag inside of there, there's a whole lot of bulk there as well. So it's just stress on this little guy. Now I've got a lot of fabric here. I'm using my pinking shears. So if you have a hard time with your pinking shears, you could cut that off first so you're not dealing with all that bulk. I'm just taking my time. There are times where when I use my pinking shears, they just kind of go haywire and I get all crooked. So we don't want to do that. All right, so I've trimmed. See how that's gone a little haywire right there? So I'm going to go back and just trim some of that. And you could actually cut out that bulk right inside of there before we did the stitching. You could cut off that excess if you wanted to do that so you wouldn't have all that bulk. I'm going to go ahead and just with my pinking shears, I'm basically now just making a mess of all of that. I've got a couple threads left, so we're going to trim some of those threads. We're going to turn this inside out and see what this looks like without the boxed bottoms. And we'll put that do doggy bag inside of there, the doggy bag roll inside of there. So I'm just turning right sides out. Poke out those corners. Remember, we've got the stiletto that works really well for that, too. So we can get really pretty corners. If you're going to make these and sell these, then this might be the fastest way. Don't do those corners. But if you want to make these and sell them and sell them for a little bit more than your competition, then those mitered corners, the box corners do help. All right, so we've got this. That's what we have. And again, you get rid of all those threads that are there. Trim those threads and let's stick the baggies in and see what they look like. All right, so the roll of baggies. I've got green, I've got red. So I would get bags that match or match your threads. So this guy here, when you peel this off, you can see it has an arrow going in one direction. What I find with this is that sometimes this tape will take that first doggy bag and rip it. So just take your time to get that unrolled. If you find that your doggy poo bag or doggy uh, poop bag holder doesn't hold this, you can actually take a couple of the bags off of here. If your bag is just too small, if this is too small for the bags, then you can actually take a couple of these off and it will fit inside of there. But realize that the next time you go to fill this, that you're going to have to remove a couple of those bags too. All right, so we want to look to see which way these come out. You can see here, when I pull these, see how easily that is for me to pull? So this is rolling in the direction of the under piece. This is the piece that's over. So we want to have this going. This is the one that's over. So we want to have it going this way versus this way. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it's one of those things that just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so we're going to squeeze this in one side. And we're going to squeeze it in the other side, and we'll be able to take a look at this. And then we'll look at the boxed corners and do the boxed corners. All right, and you do have to finagle at this because it is a tight little spot. And remember, the more baggies that you use, the easier it is going to be in there and the looser it is in there, too. All right, so you can see I'm going to finagle that a little bit. I'm going to push that side underneath there, and there is our nice little doggy bag. Okay, so this doggy bag holder, you can see those corners are kind of poking out. But that still looks really cute, doesn't it? Okay, so that's one option for you there. Let's go ahead and pop this out. We're going to turn it back inside out again. And you can do those box corners a number of ways. Our boxed corners should be consistent. And what I find is that mine never are unless I use my box at square it, place it templates. So I want to show you without the box at square it, place it templates what you would be doing. Let's poke everything out. I did a good job of poking those corners with the stiletto. So in a second, we're going to come back and with the stiletto, and you'll notice it kind of takes on the shape of that inside piece, so that's a little lumpy. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the stiletto, 
and I'm going to press really well at those corners. If you don't have the box at Square at Place at Templates, and they were really made for bigger projects than this, but I want to show you two ways to do it. Okay, so we've gotten those corners. That's going to give me a little bit of a crease. So when we do a box corner, we reach in and start at the side that doesn't have our hardware. All right, so we're going to pull my two edges out, and we're making a V. I'm going to turn this over, and that crease that's there, I don't know if you can see it's going more that way. I want to have it go this way a little bit more. And what I want to do is have this line lined up straight with my seam. And I can promise you that if I did this right now, this one would be a little cockeyed this way, and this one would be a little cockeyed the other way. They we're basically going to be stitching that across. So you can do that. That's one option on all four of those corners. But I mentioned the box at Square at Place at Templates. These guys come as a separate set of tools. They have five templates, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten corners that you can get. This is a one inch corner inside of here. There's the number one. And again, if you go in and color that with the metallic, see how hard it is to see that one. And this is two and a quarter. So I'm going to use the one inch, but I don't want a one inch. So what are we going to do? This seam that's right here is where we're measuring, not the edge, but that seam. So here to here, do you see how huge that would be for me? So we don't want to do that. We're basically going to be looking to see. Do you see how if I scoot this over, I'm basically halfway here and about halfway there, and I keep going and I keep going, and what I want to look at is this right now. Do you see how that's a rectangle? I basically want to get it to where it's a square. Remember our seam allowance that's there? I'm basically looking at that. So when I have that there, and I like what I have there, that I can see what it is that I have there. We can go in, you can use the rotary cutter, but I'm just gonna go in and cut, or draw first, and then cut. And what I wanna do is look to see on my mat. So we're gonna line this up, and if I look here, I can see right about here, it's half of a half. So I'm basically at a quarter of an inch there. And then when I look over here, let's get that there, you can see from here to here, that's about half of a half. So I have my quarter inch. So as long as my pen drew, let's see if my pen drew. Nope, I love it. I love it when you have a pen that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So let's go back and we'll see if we can do that again. And we're looking at from here to here, using the mat if you want to. And then I'm gonna be looking at from here to here. And you can see I have it up a little bit higher than it should be. So we can do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you with the rotary cutter. Do you see what I just did there? I don't recommend cutting your first time around something this tiny, but you can. Okay, do you see what that did? I cut almost all of that. On a project where you're doing the whole thing, those cut marks that are there for you, they're gonna cut and they'll give you that perfect corner. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip the rest of that. I wanna show you what we would do. We've gone ahead and we cut out that quarter. We basically have a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch there. So now when I go to line things up, I don't have to use that fold. I'm gonna reach in inside here and I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna look, and do you see how that gave me my stitch line? So I'm not guesstimating anymore. So we're gonna go stitch this one down. And we definitely want to back stitch on these because that's where all that pressure is. And you can use your pinking shears if you want to here as well. You know, pinking shears are going to give you that nicer finish. Okay, let's go take a look and see what we got. That quarter inch gave me this nice mitered corner, or not minor, nice boxed corner. Can you see this boxed corner there? See if I can get my fingers out of the way. There, you can see it. Look how cool that is. That's just perfect for this. 
So you can see how nicely that's going to fit in. So you can use these. Even though these templates weren't made to do small corners like that, it's hard to make a template that's going to cut just a quarter of an inch. Most of the rulers that we have, a half of an inch is the smallest, but you can use that. So what would you do? You do the next side, you do the next side, you do the next side. So again, we would place this back here. There's my first corner. And I always recommend you testing first to make sure you like it. Once you know what you like, that that's good, then you go ahead and do all the cutting on the others. And again, the strap is attached over here, so we're gonna come down here. So what are we doing? We're not using the edge of the fabric, we're using that seam, and we're basically going to be placing this so that we can see I've got my little bit. Can you see that square that's inside of there? So when I look to see, from here to here, you can see I'm over this way a little bit too much. So I'm going to scoot this here. And now we can basically see when I'm right on the edge. See how I'm about halfway there? I'd still go a little bit more that way. And when I bring this down, I'm lining this edge up to here. And I'm looking at from here down, I'm about halfway. So we would go ahead and cut that. And again, you can trace it out if you want to. If you're going to use the rotary cutter, keep your fingers out of the way. I do not want to hear that I'm the reason that you had to go to the hospital to get stitches. Because this little tool is not meant for something this small. All right, and most of the time, because we're doing something teeny tiny like this, we would want to snip that off. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to reach inside. We're going to poke all that out. I'm going to the side with that seam. And what am I going to do? I'm going to stitch across my quarter inch. All right, so you would do that on all four sides. Okay, that gives me this little guy, this little guy. That gives me this. So I've got my nice miter, or nice boxed corners. I don't know why today I want to say mitered corners. These are boxed corners. It's a nice finished corner. If you're not up for that, then the flat is just fine. But I want to very quickly show you how to do the vinyl, the faux leather, all of these things. You can buy these. This is like in the felt department. This, again, is kind of a vinyl here. This no slip loves this stuff. So you're not going to have any issues when you do something like that. If you have a pattern, you've got to decide. Remember, we're going this away. So this is going to be up and down, what we're seeing here, versus this away, where it's going to be seen like that. So I want to have the template going this way. All right, and again, the no slip material on the back of this just really grabs. So which one am I grabbing? I grabbed the smaller of the two, the four and the quarter by five inches. What are we going to do? We need to fold in half. We're going to do that nice little snip for the center. One layer is all I need to do. You can do the two layers like I did with that gold all right, and you can see my snip, and there you can see my snip. And I had fabric over here that's a little bit wider than what I want, so we're going to square this off. And I don't have a whole lot of fabric. This is going to be going this way, so this doesn't matter so much about being straight. And you can see I've got, let's do it on my blue line rather than my navy. So I'm going to do two inches. So I'm going to use the same template to cut my two inch by whatever. And by whatever is gonna be the length of this. We're gonna fold in half. And remember, this would all be based on which jump ring, which um, swivel hook you're going to be using. So you have to decide the width of that. And I really would be using the stiletto and I really would be using the iron, but you get the idea. We would press that. I'm going to use this little guy here. I like these, the black. Let's make sure that this is going to be wide enough, but not too wide. Before I sew that down, see how that's on there good? And again, white thread versus black thread, I would be using black thread at the sewing machine. All right, 
back of the cutting table. I'm going to grab this little guy here. We're going to fold this inside. And all those threads, you would take the time to cut all of those off. We're going to stitch this just like we did before, but now you can see this little clip that I have here that snaps on and snaps off easily. We're going to, at the sewing machine, stitch my edges together and then move that needle so we can stitch close to the swivel, um, that ring that we have there. Put your foot down first to get as close as you can and then move that needle over. And if you do want to take the time to get out a match and burn those threads, you can do that. You can tie off the threads. A heavyweight thread, of course, is going to give you a much nicer, more professional look on all of this. You know, the more you take your time on these projects and you do those little finishing touches, the better it's going to be. All right, so this is my swivel that I have here. And we're going to place this right in the middle. As we can see, I'm going to go from the back side. And remember, I'm going to definitely be using the Teflon foot here or a foot that has that scotch tape on the back. The scotch tape lets me still work with this and it won't stick. Why are we using a Teflon foot or something else, the scotch tape? Because this is sticky and it loves the foot of your sewing machine and it loves the bed of your sewing machine. All right, remember earlier when I said I would snip off that excess before? Do you see how I've still got a little bit of excess there? Go from the back side and you can trim off all that excess if you want to. That way you don't have all that bulk. I only have one layer, so it's not really necessary here. But on a project where you've got a lot more bulk, snipping off that excess is a good thing. All right, so this is laying down flat. What are we going to do? We're going to bring this past. We're going to bring this back over past. And we're going to flip over and we're going to look. Do you see how this one is not past? So I'm going to flip that just a little bit past. Now I'm saying past because I've got a little bit less than a half of an inch that I have here in the middle. If I was using something thick like this to put my keychain on or my clip or whatever on, I'm definitely not going to do that. But we want to have these overlapping. And do you see how the back is not lined up straight? So we want to make sure that all of those are lined up. And again, if you want to use a clip, on this, you have to use a clip, not pins. All right, so you can see what I've got here. I'm going to stitch from this side since I've already got it in my hands here. And let's move that needle back to my center position, quarter inch. And when you're working with vinyl, you don't want to back stitch a whole lot, you don't want to stitch over a whole lot because that vinyl will definitely rip or tear. It's like perforated paper. And also, you'll want to increase your stitch length for sure when you're working with vinyl instead of a 2.4, a 2.7, a 3.0, something like that is a good thing. All right, you can see here the width that I have here and the width that I have here. I've got all this bulk that's here. So that's going to interfere with what I'm doing over here. So we want to make sure that we're looking on the back side at that little snip that I have. I think this snip just really helps. And I'm looking at that, and I'm gonna compare it to here. And we wanna make sure that what we have is about the same. And we can see right on my table, again, with the bulk here, it's hard to tell, but I think I'm pretty close. All right, and again, this is not rocket science. This is not the hugest, you know, most precious piece you'll ever stitch. But, you know, take the time. All right, so we could do the same thing with our boxed corners. You do not need to do pinking on this, but pinking does give a nicer look. You could do a serger if you wanted to as well. I'm going to flip this over, though, just so you can see what this looks like. Definitely trim those edges, though, whatever it is that you do with the pinking shear or whatever, because we don't want to have all the bulk. Now, this is really soft. And look, you can see what it did here. Do you see that, how that's ripped on me? I don't know if this is old, or I don't know if that's just something that's not going to work for this. So this material, as cool as it is, 
it's not going to be viable. Look what happened. I just pushed right here. So I'm glad I didn't waste this on a huge project, but you get the idea. Let me show you anyway, just so you can see. Well, this is the first time that I've had that happen on this material, but I haven't done anything with this before. And it may be again that I've had it sitting in the drawer for a while, but I still want to push things out so you can see what it would look like. All right, so, <laughs> all right, I'm not going to push anymore because the more I push, the more it's falling apart, but you get the idea. So let's fail. Let's do a big, like, don't do, don't do this. And you know what? When I was looking at this stuff earlier, do you see the pucker that's here? That should have been a sign right there. That should have let me know. I thought that was just something separate. Maybe before you start, even do a little bit of a pull on your material. And do you see, even just when I do that, it kind of starts to separate a little bit. I don't think you're going to have that on something like this. This does have a texture to it. So I think something like this would work. Play with your materials, but that's kind of a good thing for you all to see. And we're going to leave it in. I'm not going to edit it out because I want you all to know when you're working with, this was a felt in the felt department from Hobby Lobby. And I don't think I've had it that long. So this material right here, that's a fail. This right here, these are those vinyl sheets that you can get. And I think this works pretty well. Same thing I think with this too. This isn't buckling. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be any different. But again, this has little boxed corners. You can see I did smaller box corners. I like the little bit larger box corners that I did here. So it's totally up to you. All right, guys, so this is to hold those doggy do, the doggy poop bags that so many of you are used to carrying. You know, if you've got a dog, you're walking that dog, you need to be carrying these and picking that stuff up. So why not rock a cute little kind of a container to hold them? This guy here can also hold chapstick or lipstick or whatever it is. And remember, I'm gonna do another video that'll show you how to do a little strap here, a strap here. So you can make this to hold, you know, something really cute if you wanted to do that. I'm gonna show you how to do this one that will hold. I still haven't figured out where I would attach this, but I wanna have this at the sewing area to hold my clips and things, because I think it's just the perfect size. This was done from the four and a quarter by five. This one here was done from two of the four and a quarter by six inches. And again, you could do a snap here, I think would be really cute. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to do these guys here. So imagine when you've got this tucked inside of here and tucked inside of here and it snaps closed. And when you pull it open, it opens up, but then it snaps closed. If y'all haven't made the snap bags, just go Google them. You can go look on YouTube and it'll show you how to do these. I love using the cheap stuff from the Dollar Tree. Use your cheap scissors. And not only are you gonna cut one, but you're gonna cut two. Now, I've already cut this, so I'm not gonna be able to get any more of this out without it all going back in there. We're just gonna do this real, real fast because this is pretty much, once that end comes off of here, you're in trouble. You'd have to take that whole thing apart with the screwdriver. Okay, so I am basically right there at the end. I don't care if there are numbers there or not. So I'm gonna hold this. Oh, I'm glad y'all couldn't see me shaking. Okay, this thing here, that's trash. I actually take this off and use that, so right there. So, all right, so these guys here, you can save those for all kinds of other projects. Don't cut them all up into sizes yet because you're not really sure what size you're gonna want till you start working on projects. Okay, the reason why I have two of these together, we would tape them together, round those edges off, then tape those together, is when you use these snap bags, if y'all have seen me do the snap bags before, every time you go open, close, open, close, open, close, one of these, sooner or later, ah, it gets stuck. But with two of them, it will stay closed. So if you have worked with the um, bags before and you found that you had to buy the more expensive 
of these guys here, two together in one side, two together in the other side. And I've talked about it and I've done other videos on this, so it's not something that's brand new, but maybe it's brand new to some of you that haven't seen this before. But I will do a couple projects with that. I'll do some projects with some leather and some faux leather using these templates. I think the templates just by themselves are versatile for all kinds of little projects that you wanna do, but they're just like the larger templates that I have here for the tissue holders. So the tissue holders that I have come from the larger and the doggy poop bag comes from the smaller. All right, so whether you're working with fabric, with vinyl, with faux leather, with whatever it is, get some of these cool little jump rings and some of these little attachments. Get your dog and go take him for a walk. You can find these on my website, so winterdesigns.com. These are called Doggy Poop Bag Template Set. And you can also follow me on Facebook. It's Winter Designs for Sewing and Quilting and Monkeys decided to join us. And you can follow me on YouTube. Please like, comment, share, follow, all those good things that keep my numbers going and keep everybody knowing about all the great things that I have. And if you have any ideas for me, let me know. I'd love to see what you're interested in making. Thanks.